We're here with Mr. Andreas Antonopoulos, author of Mastering Bitcoin, and we thank you for giving us a few minutes of your time to speak to some of the parents out there who want success for their kids and they're concerned with what's going on in the school system. They're not quite sure what to do about it, but someone like yourself, understanding technology and Bitcoin and blockchain and some of the uh, things to come, uh, we're grateful for you to share some of your insights, what parents should know, be aware of if they want their kids to be successful here in the 21st century uh, with this technology revolution. Yes, well, thank you for having me. And um, you know, my primary focus is education, obviously focused in a very narrow sense on uh, Bitcoin and this emerging technology of global borderless currency and what implications that has. A fascinating thing that I've encountered again and again over the last uh, five years I've been doing this is that when you start a conversation with someone about uh, Bitcoin, you first have to take a few steps back and talk about money. And what surprises me is that uh, so many people really have a very vague understanding of what money is and how it works. And we're talking here about uh, money as a technology, uh, but it's also a component of social institutions and it's a language for expressing value to each other. It's a technology that is uh, probably almost a hundred thousand years old. We don't quite know, uh, because uh, we find evidence that money precedes writing as a human technology. This is an ancient technology. It's one of the most important technologies we have in society, and yet um, nobody talks about it. It's not taught as a technology, as a concept. And most people have no clue how money actually works. I can't tell you how many times I'm having a conversation with people about Bitcoin, and they'll say things to me like, "Well, uh, how can Bitcoin work if it's not backed by gold like the dollar?" And I have to have a conversation about how the dollar hasn't been backed by gold uh, since the 1930s. Um, and uh, really, that conversation reveals many times when people have questions about Bitcoin. They're really asking questions about money because they don't understand how money works. Um, I grew up in Greece. I went to school in Greece, and uh, we were not taught about money in school. But uh, I don't think that's unique to Greece. In fact, uh, I find talking to American parents as well as uh, parents in many other countries that uh, money is not taught as a subject in school. It's also not taught by parents to children. And part of the reason is that um, parents don't have a very good idea of how money works. And to me, that financial education is, is really important. Um, whether you are interested in Bitcoin and new forms of money or not, and you just want to better understand traditional forms of money, uh, national currencies, it's, uh, it's shocking to me that in uh, most education systems, money is not a topic of education, and money is not a conversation that parents have uh, with their children. I think, funnily enough, if you sit down with a five-year-old and you start talking money, the questions that they ask you will very quickly lead you to realize that you don't know much about money either. Um, children have this annoying habit of asking uh, pointed and deeply insightful questions for which adults have no answers. Um, and you know, from, from the mouths of babes, you get the truth. And uh, uh, ironically, if you have a conversation about money with, with a child, you, you very quickly reach the end of your knowledge. Um, so, of course, in order to educate others about money, you first have to learn yourself and study and try to understand how money works in our society. Most people would be shocked to find out that money works in a very different way than they understand. Um, many people still think that national currencies are backed by precious metals. Um, very few people uh, understand that, for example, in the United States, uh, the Federal Reserve is not a government organization. It's a private company uh, that is owned by banks, and that money is issued uh, through debt. And uh, it's through the issuance of debt that money works as a financial instrument. Um, and once you start digging into the history of money and understanding how it works, you realize that the money we use today is very different from the money we used a uh, hundred years ago, and that that changed dramatically from the money people used um, 
four to six hundred years before that. So the history of money shows this change over time in the technology of money. And we take for granted the money we have today. We assume it's always been like that, and it will always be like that. And history tells us that that's not true. Uh, money has changed four times already in human history, uh, from very early systems of barter to systems of abstract money, uh, systems of money based on precious metal, and then systems of money recorded on paper, and then in databases uh, that had no relationship to precious metal. And now we're seeing kind of the fifth transition with Bitcoin, and it gives us an opportunity to study this topic more carefully, um, and an opportunity to uh, really convey important life lessons to our children. Uh, right now, children being born today will not know a world where the internet uh, didn't exist. Um, but even more so, they will not know a world where things like Bitcoin didn't exist. They are growing up in a world that could potentially be very different from the one we grew up in. And, uh, so giving the skills uh, to children to understand uh, what money is, and how it works, and how it will influence their life, uh, is a very important thing. But at the same time, there is enormous cultural taboo around speaking about money. We uh, don't discuss money with our friends. We don't discuss our income. Uh, it's considered socially awkward to talk about money. Everybody has to pretend that money is a topic of little interest to them, even though it dominates our life. And that inherent conflict, making a subject taboo, robs us of power. It robs us of the power to understand, explain, and uh, use money intelligently uh, by not talking about it. Uh, we fail to see uh, what power it has over our lives, and also uh, when it becomes corrupted or captured, um, what power that can have over people's lives. I visit many countries around the world where um, money suddenly becomes of great interest to people when it stops working properly. Uh, when through hyperinflation or economic collapse, the system of money itself stops working, and then suddenly people show great interest in understanding what money is and how it works. Um, uh, and part of the problem of living in a society where money has been stable for decades is that you don't anticipate that in the future it might not be stable, uh, and it's better to understand these things uh, before you have to. Uh, when learning is a luxury and not a necessity. So that's my uh, message today. Um, it's not about Bitcoin. It's not about the new technology of money. It's more fundamentally about having an open um, conversation about uh, money with children, um, equipping them from an early age uh, in the fundamental knowledge they need to participate in a system that dominates our life, whether we like to talk about it or not. Thank you so much. You're very welcome. Thank you. Have you ever heard of unschooling? Unschooling? No, I don't think I've heard about that. It's something you should really check out, or maybe even private school. Where do you learn about this stuff? I learned about this at the Education Options Expo. It's a really fun, great event where we as parents can learn about the options for our children's education success. Sounds great. When and where is this expo? Saturday, March 25th in San Jose. Doors open at 9 a.m. Come discover the exciting possibilities for your child's education in 2017 and beyond. The Education Options Expo is just a place to find answers to your questions. Are you curious about homeschooling? Would you like to learn about apprenticeships? How about self-directed learning? Is your child interested in rap or other kinds of music? Does your child want to become a leader and create safer neighborhoods? How can students become independent journalists? What is Act On Academy? What is a holistic school? How do you transition from public schooling into homeschooling? These topics and many more will be discussed on March 25th in San Jose. Get your early bird tickets and save now. Plus, there's free parking and free childcare with every ticket. Reserve your seat now and come discover the future of education today.
Hey, I just registered for the expo. Super excited. Yeah, I'll see you there.